Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Haven't heard that for a long time. Uh, today's guests, including Ray Ferraro standing by, hence Brass Bonanza, brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort. Book your stay at the Bayside and enjoy the many amenities the hotel has to offer. Oceanfront rooms, free parking, oceanfront restaurant, cafe, indoor and outdoor swimming pools, gym and more. Call 250-248-8333. We'll go to their website, BaysideResortParksville.com. As we bring in from the NHL on ESPN, our friend Ray Ferraro. Ray, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Yeah, g- good. And I, I said the NHL on ESPN. Let's not forget you're also doing uh, Canuck games on on Sportsnet uh, for yeah. for the first time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. last, I don't. I think when we last talked to you, you, you were just uh, beginning that venture. How much are you enjoying that? Right. Uh, I love it. It's it's honestly, guys, it's been more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, working with Shorty and Murph for, you know, two good buddies of mine. And, um, you know, we have a lot of laughs and certainly, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt that the teams, you know, rolled around pretty good and, you know, we've had lots of good games. The, the LA game wasn't much fun. Um, you know, there's, there's only so much you can say when the day goes like that, but I've, I've loved it. I've, uh, it, it, it means, it, it means more to me than I thought it was going to, you know, like, being a trail kid, I, mm-hmm. you know, I've watched the Canucks forever and, and, you know, but I, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't really cheer for anybody, but I'm kind of following the Canucks because of Cami and, uh, you know, a little more closely maybe. <laughs> and, uh, but to do the games has been, it's been just way more fun than I thought. I just, I, I'm loving it. It's been great. Hey Ray, uh, Friday's trade deadline coming up. Is there an mm-hmm. obvious need the Canucks mm-hmm. have to address? Well, okay, so there's I, I'm gonna I'll answer this in two parts. The answer is yes. I mean it would be nice to get another forward, mm-hmm. I think. It would be nice to to get another guy that can play in their top six that uh, has a reliability of production. But there's three parts to to every trade, and I think we get all wrapped up that we forget that there's it's not just one thing, it's three parts. So the first part's that you you have to identify the need. And so you, you know, every team, I think you could probably go around the league and go, they could use this, mm-hmm. they could use this. You identify the need. The The second part is the availability of that need. So it's a little crowded if you're looking for a right defenseman. Like everybody seems to be looking for a guy that shoots right, that skates backwards. So there's the availability. And the third part is, do you have the assets to make the trade? And so all three of those things have to come together. And then the complicating factor is the guy or two that you've identified, you're not the only guy looking mm. for that player. So you're you're now you're in a bidding war, you're in a poker game, you're trying to get to the other GM at the right time. So because he might tell you, wait a minute, I've got a I've got another offer I gotta consider. And then you're waiting. How long do you wait before you move on to the next target? Yeah. Like it's but all this time they scout and they put their list together and then it comes down to those last couple of days and man the i i would assume there's about 42 scenarios in each room and everybody's trying to piece together the best they can do and try and get the as close to the player that they want that they can sometimes you get the player sometimes you get the next best guy and sometimes that might work out work out fine too Hey, what was your reaction to uh, Elias Pettersson's uh, extension? And, and Ray, there, there was this thought, a two-part question, but the reaction, and there was this thought around Canuck Nation that all the noise and his contract situation was, was, was affecting his play. I don't know if that ever you know, bothered you when, when you were playing. It's a little different now with social media. But your reaction to the extension yeah. and in the second part of the question, does that, do you think that noise gets the players? Well, the to the contract, I, I thought when Nylander signed his deal in, um, in Toronto, it became pretty pretty clear, like that was the latest, biggest deal that about what number, you know, Pedersen was going to come in, uh, around what number. Mm. Uh, the question then becomes, what was the length of term and was it going to be a five-year deal? Was it going to be longer? Whatever it was going to be. Um, certainly the... 
the pressure seemed to ramp out, ramp up Mm -hmm. in those couple of days just before. Um, Nobody's impervious to pressure. As much as you want to play it cool, as much as you want to, in in Pedersen's case, push this off to the off season, eventually it it starts to weigh heavy. And each each side, the team and the player, they're they're trying to figure out what's the leverage point, what's the best business point. Pedersen wants to wait. The Canucks get to a point where they're like, wait a minute, we can only ask so many times, and are we are we going to get a deal done, or are we not going to get a deal done? The I, I would say uh, maybe a kind of in the ether mm-hmm. um, uh, factor to all of this was the fact that two years ago when entering RFA, uh, Matthew Kachuk said, I'm not going to sign in Calgary. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, I mean, that's that's just kind of hanging out there, but everybody notices and everybody goes, well, wait a minute. I don't want my big boy getting into uh, RFA status. What if he drops that on my feet right before the draft again. Now what do I do? So the team has to take control of whatever they can. The player is going to take control and push the leverage as much as he can. Uh, It was really, this is, this was unique though, because everybody was in the dark on it. Agents, team, like it, the vault that Patterson has you know, must be a thimble. Like it's it, right. Like no, nobody knew anything until those last couple of days. Ray, take a look. Uh, right now, I, I heard somebody on the radio being asked, "Who's your Stanley Cup pick right now? Um, who's yours? And are the Canucks in the mix for you to go deep?" Um, okay, so I was in Detroit on Saturday afternoon, yep. and I watched the Panthers play. And I was like, oh boy, that's that's kind of like last year's Vegas. Right. Like they are big and mean and they've got really good goaltending. They've got an excellent defense. Oh, and by the way, they got all kinds of cap space. Mm-hmm. Like they I haven't seen anybody look better on a singular day than in the games I've done than Florida. It's you know, guys, it's different watching on TV than like if you go down to Rogers Arena and you see the game and you're like, it just looks different, right? Like the players look different. And so I've seen Florida play on TV and been pretty impressed. And I watched that game and I'm like, Detroit's a good team and they're going to be a playoff team. And to me, the gap between what Detroit is and what Florida is, is significant. And the reason I bring that up is I if I were to pick one team right now, which is March the 5th, I, I would pick Florida. I, wow. I was thoroughly impressed. Um, they, they're, they're veteran laden. They're battle tested by last year's run. Um, they've got an excellent coach who's seen just about everything. And he's coached for like 20 state or 30 years. I don't even know. Yeah. You know 30 right years. He's there. been a head right. coach. Right. So, so I, I, that would be, that would be my team, and that's a surprise for me because I wouldn't have picked them. Like even surprise to me that I wouldn't even have, I wouldn't have picked them six months ago. Are the Canucks in that mix? I think if I look at the West, um, I'm, you know, I still think Vegas is a real problem. Um, when they get healthy, if they get healthy, um, is Mark Stone going to play? Is he not going to play? That's a big factor mm. for them. But I think Vegas is a problem. Edmonton is a real problem. Um, it, it's hard, like the season's so long and they're trying to dig out of that, you know, horrific start that they had. Well, you can't even look at them like that team anymore. Like, you know, like so many factors have come into play and they won't look the same Saturday as they do now either. Hmm. Like I, you know, Edmonton is they're They're going to, they're going to do their best to make a, a big move. I believe Colorado. I, I think their top end is so good, I can't walk past them. Um, but I, I, it just doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like it right now. But I put the Canucks, if they can add one more forward, and Lindholm has to get on track, because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. um, I, I think he's a really good player. I was really excited uh, when they added him. He's a, 
as much as I hate this term, he's a 200 foot player. I really hate the term because <laughs> everybody says they're looking for 200 foot players. Well, <laughs> there's about, there's about 50 of them in the league, right? Everybody is stronger in one place than another, but man, Lindholm can be a difference maker and he's, he just looks unsure so far. And, and I, I think there is a, there is another gear here. If he hits it, like he changes the outlook of their team. But I think Vancouver is in that, they are in that mix. And one of the other reasons is because they got one of the best goalies. Like you can, in four out of seven, like you could get blown out three times. And if your goalie is brilliant four times, you win. And and Demko has that cap- capability. Ray, the, the Canucks have had Phil Kessel sitting in Abbotsford for a couple of weeks. Uh, they still haven't made up their mind. We're, we're expecting a decision uh, soon. What are your thoughts? Uh, is that a guy you'd sign for depth, uh, you know, purposes? You know, like, w- what do you think about when they got Kessel sitting there as a possibility? Well, they got to do it by Friday. Yeah. Um, or else he's not eligible for the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen one second of anything that he's done there. Um, they would have to be comfortable enough that if they dropped them into a game that he would be able to to be able to keep up, be able to play, be yeah. able to be just like a a reasonable remembrance of of what Phil Kessel used to be. So could he play deeper in your lineup on your fourth line? Could he be a second power play guy? You could say, gee, could he be a third line guy? That's kind of where Garland lives. Yeah. And and I, I Garland has been fabulous this year. But what if he's a player that plays in and out of your lineup? He's not going to bust your cap, right? I mean, the, the deal is the minimum or nothing. And so I, I don't mind that he's there. I, I, like I said, I just don't have any, any real reference as to whether he could step in and play or not. I, I, I don't know. It would seem like it would be really hard to sit around for seven months and then jump in and play. And then you have to remember last year, he, you know, he, he didn't get in. I don't, did he get in at all in the playoffs? Uh, four, or games. Or four games. Four, four games. Four games. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, and th- so where's the spot where, what if he's here just as an injury blanket? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's, that's something to consider too, because if there are injuries up front, who's your next guy? That might be what you're looking at is who's the next guy. Yeah. It's somebody that's really inexperienced. Hey, Ray, uh, one more before I let you go. You've been active on Twitter along with uh, John Butchegras uh, from ESPN uh, mm-hmm. uh, regarding the NHL's playoff format. And, mm-hmm. and you and I remember, you know, uh, six of 12 teams making, 16 of 21 teams uh, making the playoffs, yeah. 16 of 32 right now. What would you like to see? Well, first of all, Donnie, we used to, when I was playing in Hartford, we used to call it the original 21. <laughs> and uh, we – we disregarded the the original six. We're like, but sixteen of the twenty one teams made it. You know how yeah. bad you had to be to miss. Yeah, <laughs> like that. That was Big pretty, time. pretty yeah. tough. Pretty tough. Well, so I really came to this. Well, it's not an idea, but this thought of uh, a few years ago when Landon was playing in Germany. Mm. So they have one league of of sixteen teams. So basically, two conferences of sixteen teams. So in there, you still have the divisions. I would keep the divisions. And the division winner in each side gets a buy. Mm. So now they're they're seed. Well, they don't really get a buy. They get they're seeded one and two. Okay, so the two division winners. After that, everything goes on points. So now you get from teams three to six. They get seeded, and they don't have to play in the play-in round. Teams seven through ten play in the play-in round. It's a two out of three, and then they become the seventh and eighth seeds. So team with the most points in the conference plays the eight seed. Two plays seven, right? And you can go forth. So this is why I liked it. Each year, as you get into the playoffs, there's like three or four different playoff races going on. Yeah. Each mm-hmm. teams are trying to win and fight to be the one and two seeds so they can have home ice advantage all through the playoffs. Teams three through six are fighting like hell not to be in the seven to ten play in. So they're in their own, they're in their playoff race to get three to six. Teams eleven and twelve are fighting like hell to get into 
the seven to ten play in. What I don't get from the league's perspective is there is revenue sitting there. Yeah. It's like it's low hanging fruit. Yeah. And you could easily gas a week of preseason and blow out a couple of those preseason games that nobody wants to play. Yes. And nobody wants to watch. So get rid of those preseasons. Guys are in shape. You would have get to your regular teams a little quicker. Move that up one week. The playoffs, the play-in round would start in one week earlier. And so you would be on the same time frame. It would not be one day longer. Not one day longer. I'm telling you, those play-in series are wars. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic. Because everybody wants to get to the next round. So just think you're extending it out. You're building revenue. You're building interest. I don't, I don't get why it's a, an absolute no goal. I know the playoffs are great. I get it. You're not even really adding another round. You're adding, at max, three more games. Yeah. I would love to see it. Yeah, and, and like you say, mm-hmm. uh, adding revenue. Uh, Rick and I barely got through grade 12, so we'll look back at your clip and we'll give you a reaction <laughs> later. It, it, like, it went, right, went right over us, but it sounds way better than what's happening now. Well, okay, just... Just just draw it out on a piece of paper. Even you you could get Ryan to draw it. On no, yeah, no, 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 no. That, that won't that'll make it no, worse. No. Yeah. Did you say grade twelve? Barely. Yeah. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Believe it or not, we did get through it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Grade eleven and a half here, and yeah. then I yeah. write the exams, and I yeah. got it. Yeah. I was like, I'm on. Atta boy. That's Atta it. boy. So between the three of us, there is no math. Yeah. Time to get out of here. Yeah. Nobody in the media went to Harvard, Ray. You know that. <laughs> no, they drove by the campus yeah. once. Looks really nice. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of it. That's about it. Ray, yeah. thanks for this. We'll get you back soon. Okay, great. Great to talk to you guys. Uh, Dolly, leave the agents alone this week. Would you just leave them alone? All morning since 6 o'clock this morning, Ray. 6 o'clock, right off uh, the bat. Uh, Boom. Attaboy. They love it, too. They love, yeah, they love it. it. They do. They do. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks, Enjoy. Ray. Be well, eh? Yeah, yeah you too, Ray. Uh, Ray Ferraro, uh, ESPN.